a lot of women don't understand that guys have standards too. And it's hard for me to fathom anything more privileged than that. <laughs> because, it, you know, do they, do they not understand it or do they not care, right? And what it probably boils down to is they just don't care or they don't think about it that much. Because in their mind, they have an ideal. And they're like, why isn't my ideal being filled? I'm a woman, I was told everything is wonderful, I was told I was powerful, I was told I can have everything I want just by being, just by believing it or manifestation or whatever. And I'm a female. I'm constantly getting this positive feedback. Guys are constantly hitting on me. So why am I not getting the guy that I want? Because they don't understand nuance. And when guys tell them what we want, they ignore it or they attack us and they, and they call us names, right? Guys want a low body count. Guys want a woman who's not a harlot sleeping around, and we get attacked for that, right? So not only do they ignore our standards, but they attack our standards. They don't even view that as standards. They don't view that as a standard because it's not one of their standards. Because women don't care if men are loose sleeping around. In fact, they want that guy. They want the guy who other women want. It's called pre-selection right so they don't have the same standards that we do men like purity we like chastity men like women with a low body count men like women who are feminine right youthful right that doesn't mean that we're you know robbing the cradle or whatever I'm not saying guy every guy wants an 18 year old but we we want some youth we don't want older women and that that makes sense biologically the older a woman gets the less chance she has to conceive and the less you know uh youth and fertility she's going to pass she, she's going to be able to bring to the table and pass down to her children the older she gets the more jaded she gets the more relationships she's been in the more time she's been around the carousel guys know this and women hate us for it they can't get that we have standards. They don't understand that we have standards. And they don't even want to admit that we have standards because they don't, they think that they're fine. And, and this in and of itself is a double standard, right? They have a ton of standards, right? You know, you have women out here who are making lists, five, ten page long lists of things that they want in a guy. He has to be gentle, good with his mother, good with kids. He has to be respected around the community. He has to drive this kind of car. He has to be this tall. He has to, all these like crazy, insane, mostly outward standards. And then guys have a few standards. Yeah, we, we don't want her to be too old. We don't want her to be too loose. We want her to have a decent personality. We want her to be feminine, right? That's about it. Like, like that's about, we don't require anything outwardly. We don't require anything as far as materialis, uh, materialism, as far as, you know, her career or what kind of car she drives. That's not in our, in most men's, maybe some men are like that, but for the most part, men are not. We just want a woman who will be with us, who, who will help us along the way, not take away from us, right? Not 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 quarrel with us or be another burden. We've got enough burdens in life. We just want someone to make our life better, enhance our life better. And oh yeah, we don't want her to be too old and we don't want her to have slept with the whole town. That's it. That's all that's all guys want, right? Is that too much to ask? Of course it is because she was put on this path by modern feminism, which is propagandized uh, in in the colleges and just it's popular whenever she hits 19, 18, 19, 20 most of these young women particularly in the west become feminists oh I'm a feminist even though there's really no more oppression for women stuff that they've made up that's either in the past or it was not as bad as they made it sound I you know <laughs> I, I struggle believing that every woman who was in a marriage which was representative of quote unquote the patriarchy, meaning a marriage where the the the, the husband is the breadwinner, the husband is the, uh, you know, all the responsibility of the household lies on the husband, right? They call that the patriarchy, right? 
which is an evil, an evil uh, designation to such a thing, because his position is one of providership, which is stressful. All the responsibility and dedication and, um, you know, weight of holding a household together is on the man. All that stress is off her shoulders. But that was a oppressive scenario, right? Okay. So she went out and, and, and they got their quote-unquote freedom. But what came with that? The, the satanic lie that, oh, yeah, by the way, you can go sleep around. It's okay. Go have your fun. You can get married later, right? And this is what so many young women are doing. So by the time they hit 18, 19, 20, they're already feminists. They're already out riding the carousel they're already out thinking i'm finding myself i'm you know this is you know i'm not i'm not oppressed like my grandmothers so i'm gonna go out and, and sleep around and they don't realize that that's killing that's killing off a lot of their chances for quality men right quality men our standards are you don't uh we don't want of uh, loose women. We don't want feminists. We don't want competition in the home. We don't want women thinking that and, and behaving and acting like like they're men. That's backwards. That's odd to us. It's it's unnatural. This doesn't mean to say that oh women just need to play their play their role, go be go be a, a kitchen dweller and, and you know no I'm not saying that. Right? And and I don't know if men in the past were really saying that. The fact is, is that he went and worked. He shouldered all that burden. She stayed at home and she, it's, it's called a homemaker. There's nothing wrong with being a homemaker. That's, that's wonderful. In fact, if you ask some traditional women, they'll tell you that that's the greatest job on the planet. They'll tell you that that's the most important job on the planet. And I would say it's, it's the same as being a, a provider and a, and a breadwinner. If you're a provider and you're, and you're a breadwinner, that's your role, right? And, 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 you know, I'm pro, quote unquote progressive enough to be 50 50. Okay, you want to, I mean, I pr prefer, I don't think it's the preferable scenario, but if a woman goes out and works and she hasn't slept around and she's still a, you know, feminine woman, hasn't been tainted by feminism, but she still works because that, that, that does happen, right? Which is okay, we live in 2023, That's it's not 1940, even though it was better back then, probably, right? We, we could still live on a one uh, income, you know, one income household. Now it's the way the economy is, is it's two income. And many people argue that that's because women have joined the workforce. But anyway, if it's 50-50, fine. You know, we, we that's, that's what it is today. But don't complain and act like, you know, if, if it's not 50-50, don't complain and act like, oh, you're being oppressed because you're asked to do some laundry. You're being oppressed because you're, it's, it's probably a good idea to take the garbage out and wash the dishes because that's all you have to do, right? If, that's, if you're a stay-at-home mom, fine. You're, you're a stay-at-home wife, whatever, fine. That's what you should do because the guy's out here working, right? That just makes sense. You're, 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 pulling, your, you're pulling your weight, right? And, and he's doing his thing and, and you, you know, you're not just a pet or something that stays at home and, you know, many women want that. Oh, I don't want to do anything. I just want to stay at home. The guy takes care of me. I don't even have to do any dishes. We got a maid for that. Many women want that. Anyway, if, if you're 50, 50, then, 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 then you guys split up the, split up the household duties and split up the, you know, the bills and, and it is what it is. And hopefully there's no arguing over, over who's running the household or what if that's how you want to do it but is it ideal i don't know you know um you're you're stressed out you're coming home right you come home to a woman who's also stressed out from her work you're both stressed out so who's gonna who's gonna console who who's gonna uh you know honey i know you had a hard day i'm gonna rub your back or either way man or woman right um, who's going to do that? You're both stressed out. You both got bills. You both got chores. It's, it's, is that ideal? I don't know. You know, if, if it was a one, if it was a one income household, let's say the guy worked, he came home, even the woman worked, she came home. The, the other partner had been cleaning the house or, or the house is clean. There, there's, there's meals cooked. There's, everything's good on the home front. And then when, and then when the partner who, who, who worked come home, 
the other partner who hadn't worked, they're full of energy, they're, they're uh, relaxed, they can exude that onto the other partner. But, but in a 50-50 scenario, you can't have that, right? So these are just, you know, you're going to have to adjust. Um, but they hate that we have standards, right? They hate that we have standards. They hate that we don't want gold diggers, you know, and they, and they, and they, try, to riddle, they, they try to ridicule us uh, for that, right? They hate that we don't want high body count women. They try to ridicule us for that. And they don't realize that, it doesn't matter. You could ridicule us until the cows come home all day long. You could ridicule us. It's not going to change our standards, right? The only thing that will change our standards <laughs> is if the man is in scarcity mode and he's just desperate. And I've seen many, many men like that. And it's sad. And, 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 and it, it, can get to, it can get to that point because, you know, scarcity. Because men... You know, as human beings, we need touch, we need intimacy, we need love, we need sex. These are ne these are needs, not just physical, not just the sex, the emotional, the the companionship, the intimacy, the friendship that goes along in a marriage, the the you know the banter, the the communication, the laughing, the shared moments. Those are all human things that men need and, and women need, and yet we are demonized for wanting sex or whatever even though women the hypocrisy is that they're out here having way more sex than men are because they've got unlimited access to it and do you, do you really think that they're not horny do you really think that they're not actually out there doing it no they are it's just that they don't uh, it's just that they have much more access than most men right so now men are the ones who are in scarcity more and they've that's really their only leverage they're not beating us intellectually they're not beating us talent wise they're not beating us in sports they're not beating us um in 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 economics there's still more male billionaires out there there's still more successful men out there because this is what men are supposed to do we're driven to succeed so that we can get women right the only the only th leverage that women have over men is, is is sexuality that's it because we don't have the same access to sex that women do and women act like sex is nothing women act like actually the truth is is that women leverage sex the truth is is that women uh, use sex as a power tool to get what they want that's the difference men can't do that we we don't have that ability we don't have that access the only thing we can do is if we get fame or we get popularity or we do get attention from women when, when, you know, most of the time, it's the women wanting to settle down with us for a long-term relationship because most women don't want to sleep with most men just based off physicality. They want something from us in addition to that most of the time. All right. Occasionally, there will be a hot enough guy or a guy who's in good enough shape or a guy who's tall enough, right, or he's physically gifted enough to where women will chase him and just just want him for sex but mostly that's not the case most men don't have that uh luxury right so what does that mean that means that most men are sought after for our resources we're sought after for our maturity our, our wisdom or our you know ability to fulfill that boyfriend or husband role right in in, in whatever kind of duties they want. oh he has to be you know, docile, he has to be good with my parents, he has to be good with kids, and all these other attributes, right, that women are looking for. And yet, all we want is just a woman who hasn't slept around. And they can't even do that. They can't do that in this. Because in their mind, they can't associate, I'm strong and independent, or excuse me, disassociate, I'm strong and independent with guys have some standards that don't coalesce with I'm strong and independent. Guys have standards that don't get along with I'm strong and independent because I'm strong and independent means I'm going to go out and sleep around nine times out of ten. That's what that means, right? That's what that means. That's what they're doing. I'm strong and independent. It's my body, my choice. I can go, yeah, it's your body, your choice. You're strong and independent, but that doesn't mean that your choice doesn't have consequences, right? So we're living in a time of consequences right now. We're living in a time of men are, um, you know, we're we're disgusted, we're, we're disappointed, we're disenfranchised when it comes to love and marriage, when it comes to lots of things in this world now, that is because this world 
because the devil's in the world and he's out here trying to attack men because he knows men represent God in the relationship, right? Because the because the husband as the leader is a type of God or Christ as the leader of mankind, right? Uh, in in I think it's Ephesians, is it? Uh, Paul likens Christ in the church to a bride and uh, and uh, um, a bride and a groom. The bride being the church, the groom being Christ. There's going to be a marriage in uh, the New Jerusalem, or, the, or you know, the millennium. There's going to be a wedding feast in the millennium. There's going to be a marriage in the New Jerusalem. It's, it, it, this is how God in the Bible likens the relationship of of God and man, and it's the same. That example is used in marriage. Paul says I, it, it might be in First Corinthians. Pardon me. It's either in Ephesians, I think it's Ephesians 5 or 1 Corinthians somewhere. But he says that, he says, husbands, love your wives like Christ loved the church, which is a sacrificial love, unfortunately, I think to some extent, which I have problems with because I think that men sacrificing for women today is, I don't think women deserve to be sacrificed for. You know, sacrifice in the sense that I'm suffering and going to work this job so I can, you know, afford this home so I can take care of this family that's a sacrifice that's a type of sacrificial love if a man's being selfish he's going to be like yeah i'm going to go try to be a millionaire and just do whatever i'm going to i'm going to i'm i'm working for me no most husbands are working for their families most husbands are living and and earning and and suffering and and toiling or whatever they're doing succeeding even uh for their families it's a sacrificial type of thing it's for their families but when a woman is out there working and it's for her it's not for her family it's not a sacrificial type of thing it's for her it's a selfish thing it's an ego thing which is why in today's day and age you see so many women out here if if they're succeeding in their careers or whatever extreme selfishness extreme narcissism right extreme to the point where they're almost like dictators or they're almost like um I don't know what you. I I I think of that guy in that movie Three Hundred, the the King of Persia or whatever. How 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 just horrible of a dictator he was, and this just narcissistic. And this is how women are today, you know, because it's not a sacrificial thing for women. It's a selfish thing. Oh, it's an empowerment thing. Let me build up myself. Well, that's never uh, what men were were doing. We were sacrificing our labor and our time. And our bodies, and, and unfortunately, in many cases, our health. Many men used to have heart attacks by the time they were 50 or 60. And yes, that had to do with diet and certain other things. I, and, and they didn't understand stress and things like that back in the 40s. I, I get that. But also, it's stressful to work. It, it just is. It's day in and day out. It's a grind. And good women understand that. Good women understand that that's what it is for, for, for most men. Now, we do live in an age today where you can get rich in, in more ways than you used to be able to. Normal, everyday people, it's possible to get, you know, go on YouTube and just become super popular. It's more it's more possible. And I think because of that, women are taking that and running with it as well. Because there's more millionaires and billionaires than there's ever been, you know, in 2023 than there's ever been ever, Right women are like why aren't you a millionaire and a billionaire well this guy drives a jet why don't you drive a jet so their their materialistic standards have raised but yet men's just basic standards have been are now impossible to achieve because again by the time they're 20 years old i would say i'd venture to say most of these women out here probably have at least a double digit body count maybe in the dozens <laughs> You know, I've I I tell this story often. I when I was in my early twenties, I dated an eighteen year old. So it's not crazy, you know. I'm not I wasn't forty dating an eighteen year old, but I you know I was twenty one I think or twenty two dating an eight uh, an eighteen year old, and I asked her her body count, and she was eighteen, and her body count at that time was eighteen. She was eighteen, and her body count was eighteen. I tell this story a lot because it's just an example of of just, and 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 it's not just one example. I've I've taught you know. I've, you know, in my early twenties, I dated a lot of girls, and just they're all promiscuous, man. Most of them, uh, unless she's like a devout Christian, unless she was raised in a Christian household, and 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 chastity and virginity and and 
you know those things are important there are values and morals instilled in her it, most other ones it's just not working that the, they get that feminism toxin poison in them and then they, what do they do they go out and they're just you know so so 18 by the time she was 18 she had a, th this means that she was sleeping around before she turned 18 right probably for two years or maybe a year I mean in a, in a year a, a girl could sleep with hundreds of guys because that's how accessible sex is for women and to her it was just like oh it was just fun you know that was her attitude it was just fun it wasn't a thing because this is how they view it it's just fun to them oh guys want it too and it's just fun and they don't think that like hey wait a minute there's a lot of guys out here who are not sleeping around there's a lot of guys out here who who do uh, who do put chastity and, and, and purity on a on a pedestal who, who, who uplift that that's what I want there's a lot of guys out here who are pure in that sense <laughs> but women don't think that because all they see is like oh these guys keep hitting on me that must be all men they don't see the guys who aren't hitting on them they don't see the guys who do want love who do want a marriage but they don't realize that those guys want those guys want purity and those guys don't want gold diggers we don't want to be viewed as uh, a bank account right oh because because i don't have money you can't you can't love me you can't you still wouldn't date me if i if, if i don't have money well that's not real love then guys are waking up to that guys are waking up to the fact that we're being viewed as just a bank account we're being viewed as a means to an end that, that women are investing in men's finances women are investing in men's ability to provide for them for the future now i agree that if you if you want a submissive woman or a, I hate to use that word submissive but if you want a feminine woman right who stays at home and you're the provider and you're the breadwinner well you need the money that that stands to reason and that makes sense and we need money anyways in life that that stands to reason that makes sense but it's the principle we don't want we want somebody who's going to love us regardless this is what men want I don't j j just like women don't want to be viewed as a set of tits men don't want to be viewed as, a, as a, a set of bank account numbers. We don't want to be viewed as a means to an end financially. Women don't want to be viewed as a means to an end sexually, you see? But yet, the irony is is that they're exchanging sexuality for, for money, for materialism, for finances, when they're not marrying the guy who's not rich, when they're not messing with no broke dudes. Well, this is you're, you're, you're limiting yourself to that category you're limiting yourself you're you, you are pigeonholing yourself into the gold digger category when that's how you are right and so it's just something men want you, you, you could argue it you could say oh you know you're supposed to be the provider woo 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 you could argue it but it, it, this is what men don't want gold diggers men don't want promiscuous women men don't want shallow feminist women they, sorry these are the standards and they can't and they can't stand that and they hate that and they hate that men have standards right they want us to just fulfill the role and this is where you see the sickness this is where you see that sick female nature that just wants that 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 just views men as a means to an end men are just tools and you and you'll hear this in feminist circles oh you know you need a man to change your light bulbs or a man to come change your tires or whatever and then and that's all they're good for ha 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 like that's a that's a sick thing. I mean, that's the same thing as a guy saying, "Oh, all women are good for is sex." Like, no, w women want to be viewed for having a good personality, right? Well, women want to be viewed for something more than just sex. Well, then prove it. Then prove you have a good personality. Then prove that you have character and 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 good things about you, morals and and um, you know, interesting things about you. That's more than just sex. Give us something to work with. All right, but how many women out here are just coasting off their looks? How many women out here are just coasting off their sexuality? Oh, guys want to sleep with me. I guess that means for the next 10 years I get free drinks at the bar. I guess that means for the next 10 years I get free dinners and, and guys are going to come and take me out. And, and, and then they just become these warped narcissists, right? Where, you know, they think they're celebrities just for being good looking. And that's and that's a sick scenario, and I don't want to be anywhere near a woman like that. And and so many of them are like that. So many of them are like that because they're being they they got this constant feedback loop from thirsty simp's.
from from thirsty guys who want to sleep with them. Oh, hey, beautiful. Oh, you're so gorgeous. I would love to date you. Uh, all this weird simpery that goes on on their social media pages that goes on in these dating uh, you know websites simpery right and so they're so they view as they, they view men as these weak guys there's all these weak guys who just want to get with me and all oh, they want to date me and you know marry me woo woo and, and all these and, and, and then what do they chase they chase the guy who doesn't want them because he's the guy who doesn't give a crap he's just like well whatever you know get on your knees or leave me alone like, they want that guy because he's a challenge and anyway right this is how they get to 30, 40, 50, body count. 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 body count. Because they chase those guys. They don't want Joe, Joe Simp, which, yeah, you probably shouldn't want a guy who's just going to tell you your shit doesn't stink, who's going to placate you, right? And so then men, then men get this bad rap, and good men get a bad rap because we're not, you know manipulative dark triad you know psychological bad boy narcissist game players right we're just like normal people and hey yeah we're interested in you we're attracted to you and but that's not that's not enough that we, we you know we got to be we got to have all you know <laughs> the other day i was looking at this meme and there was this girl and she had like a I think it was a 20, 30 page list of standards and, and she was like 42 years old and she looked older. She didn't look young. You know, sometimes maybe you'll get a 42, you know, 40 year old woman who's really taking care of herself and really exercised and really ate well in her life. And she looks pretty good. And you're like, well, she's, at least she taking, you know, at least she took really good care of herself. She probably has a high body count, but at least she took really good care of herself, right? But no, but no, this one didn't even, you know, this one looked 42 so there you go man you got you got a 42 year old who's aging delusional enough to believe she she, she should have a man who fits her 10 uh, you know uh, 20 30 page list of standards and really which is the crazy thing about all that is like imagine trying to love a woman like that you you when when everything you do is 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 under pressure everything you do is like you know is this is you know and she's putting all this pressure on you like oh he said this is he this kind of guy is this uh, and you're just like you, you know at, at some point you're just going to have to take what you can get lady because you you got no eggs left and and by the way one of the standards on her list was she wants kids <laughs> You're 42. You might have like five eggs left. Good luck, you know. Uh, um, that's just one example of just, and it's you know that's what it is out there. That's what it is. It's so many examples of delusion, delusion, privilege. You know, not realizing their time is over. Yeah, you you're popular from, you know, your late teens, right to your mid 30s. You're popular, but after that. It's a steep drop off. After that, it's a it, it's you know you're, you're you're losing it. Guys don't want thirty five year olds. Guys do not want thirty year olds, right? It, we sorry you know, and you can you can attack us and call us names and say oh we're just robbing the crib. Say what you want, man. But you're not gonna. It's just like guys like you know you're not gonna convince us. And, 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 and we're not probably not going to convince you, I guess, that, that, but I would say at least our standards are realistic, you know, and at least our standards are like, you know, not that many. We just want you to be youthful. We want you to be chest. We want you to be not, not a, not, not a raging bitch. You know, we, we just want you to be cool and, and, and normal and nice and kind and, and down to earth and, and. You know, like, but we can't get that, you know, and, and, and those are like just, I mean, our standards are bare minimum. You don't have to be six feet tall. You don't have to have a six pack. You don't have to uh, drive a really nice car. You don't have to have a really nice home. You don't have to have a great career. You don't have to, none of those things, none of those requirements. Just be decent looking, amiable, and not a harlot. Is that too much to ask? Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it there, guys. 
Um, just something to think about the double standards when it comes to dating, the double standards when it comes to men and women's dating standards, um, the stark contrast between the two, and the delusion that comes with modern female privilege, and even mental illness to the point where you think that you're actually oppressed, which is nonsense. I mean, you, I, I mean, you, you, you could ask 10, 20 women to give a practical example of, of how they're oppressed in their everyday life, and I bet you you wouldn't get one good answer. How are you oppressed? And they'd probably give you some uh, theoretical answer like, well, the aid, uh, or excuse me, the, the, the wage gap, the wage gap, right? That's probably what a few of them would say. But this is propaganda. This is stuff that's not true. Myths or things that have been disproven that are that are being drilled into their head and, and they're being taught to believe that they're oppressed, which is one thing you can do to keep people down is tell them they're oppressed when they're really not. That's how you can keep people down psychologically and emotionally. Uh, but really they're not kept down because it's actually a lot. That's just something that actually all that does is give them impetus to go out and sleep around, to go out and be that strong, independent woman who's getting banged, right? That's all that does, give them impetus. It doesn't really keep them down necessarily. It's just a lie that, that, that makes them angry. Oh, you know, men are bad, so I'm going to go sleep with men. Okay, that makes sense. Or I'm going to go sleep with women, hopefully. Or, or, you know, hopefully not, I should say. I mean, you know, I'm going to go sleep with women. I'm, I'm going to go be a lesbian. Like, oh, gosh. You know? And so this is this is the damaging dangerous propaganda that's out there that, that that causes the um that causes the rift between between men and women and this is and that's why i said I've, I've maintained it i've said it before and i'll say it again modern feminism is one of the biggest evils to ever happen to this planet right um you know it's a, it's a, it's a gender supremacy cult you know, it uplifts women above men. Just go look at the things that they say. Go, go look at the rhetoric, how they talk about us, right? It's, it's really messed up. But anyway, I appreciate you guys listening. It's been Jay Lee, Northwest Podcast. Peace.